at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fire For the ramparts we watch Who were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say down's that star spangled banner yeah, way for the land of the free and the Knights of Columbus, Odegaard. Mr. Schwartz, would you come up? Please be seated. As you entered the room, you may have noticed a special table in the center of the room. It is reserved to honor our missing men and women. Set for six, the empty chairs represent Americans who were and are missing from each of our service branches. Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and the newest flag, Space Force. Our civilians, all with us, in spirit, Some here were very young or not born when Vietnam began. 
However, Americans should never forget the brave men and women who answered our nation's call to serve and the cause of freedom in a special way. Let me explain the meaning of the table and then join me in a moment of prayer at the end. The table is round to show our everlasting concern. The cloth, white, symbolizing the purity of the mod their motives when answering the call to serve. The single red rose reminds us of the lives of those Americans, their loved ones, and their friends who keep the faith while seeking answers. The yellow ribbon symbolizes our continuing uncertainty, the hope of their return, and our determination to account for all of them. The slice of lemon reminds us all of the bitter fate of the captured and missing in foreign land. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears of all of our missing and their families. The candle reflects our hope in their return. The Bible re represents the strength gained through faith to sustain us and those lost from our country, founded as one nation under God. These chairs are empty, they are missing, and please stand and honor them with a moment of a silence. Now I will ask each of you to grab your water glass. To toast our honored American POW, AI, POWs, MIAs, and those who have lost their lives in battle. Our efforts to account for them and their safety, all of now, safety of all now serving our nation. Here, here. Here, 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 here.
face. Laurie, Mark. At this time, Father, <clears throat> Father Jim Murphy from his St. Isidore's Parish will come up and give his invocation. Let us pray. Lord our God, we ask your blessing upon our gathering tonight as we seek to honor our veterans past and present. Be with those who are currently serving and making it possible for us to gather tonight. We ask your blessings upon the Knights of Columbus for sponsoring this event. Continue to guide them and lead them closer to you. Bless our companionship tonight. Bless the food which we will share. Especially help us be mindful of those who go without. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to thank everybody tonight for coming. This is always a, um, a lot of work, but in the long run, when I see all the faces that are here to support veterans, um, it's just truly amazing when you see everybody out there that is trying to help um, all veterans from all eras and from whatever need that they would need whether it was mind, body, or spirit. Um, let me introduce myself. Most of you guys know who I am. My name is Mike Brutz. I'm from I'm the Grand Knight, Knights of Columbus here in Addison, Council 650. Um, so I've been told in the, in the past, even though my speeches might be right, when I start to read them out, they really don't come out right. So I'm not doing a speech this year. In the month of January, there was a lot of readings from the Book of Samuel. The book of Samuel is one of my favorite all-time um, books in the gospel to read. And I always took the book of Samuel to be of integrity um, and friendship in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the book of Samuel. My favorite part in the book of Samuel is when Samuel keeps going to Eli, and Eli says, you know, he keeps going to Eli, he says, here I am. He goes, I didn't call you, Samuel, go back to bed. This happens three more times. Samuel, go back to bed. He did not call you. I have not called you. So for the last time, Eli realizes, you know what? God's calling him. Now, by no means am I Samuel, nor am I Eli, by any means. Um, but I am a knight of Columbus. I do truly believe and love the Knights of Columbus. And I do truly believe in our Savior Jesus Christ. And with that, the reason I'm telling you about the book of Samuel is that I feel that God is called, God has called me to help those who need our help. Whether it's homeless, whether it's hungry, whatever it would be. But on this special night, we are here tonight to honor our veterans and to thank them for all that they've done. And I wish I could do a lot more than what we've done in the past. And I would like to do more than I ever could. But I'm just at this capability, this is how I figure, this is the best that I can help. If you look at the back of the program, there's a little story on there on how this dinner actually started. And I actually put that on the back of the program because I actually can't say it anymore because I cried too much. Because it, it's about our friend John. So I would like to thank everybody for coming tonight. I do need to give a couple special thank yous. One to the Village of Addison. The Village of Addison from the beginning with the Knights of Columbus and not be more supportive than what they are. And I would like to thank the mayor, deputy mayor and the board for the support that they give us. So I truly, truly want to say thank you. I don't normally do this, 
because she gets mad at me and I saw her walk around and I don't think she's sitting. But I also want to thank my wife for everything that she does for me. And she's, she's giving me the face, so there she is. Hi. And normally I would go around the room right now and say, this dignitary or that dignitary. And I've said it before, on this particular night, it's about our veterans. And in this particular instance, it's also about our first responders. So if I can get every active military, veteran, first responder to stand, So these are all of our veterans. These are all our active veterans, I mean active military. Stand up, Frank. <laughs> no, no. He's in it, no, he's a, no. You're not one that's getting away with it. But us as a country would not be the country that we are if it wasn't for these people in this room and what they did on their particular days. They're the ones, that, these guys are the ones that are in this room today are the reasons why we're able to have a banquet like this so we can honor them. Because if it wasn't for them, God knows where we would be. You guys all can see it. And I do want to give a special thank you to the first responders as well, because a couple years ago we actually had a, um, we did a veteran, it was actually, it was the Addison uh, police officer, and he was a veteran that actually came home and um, served his country, came home and served his, served the community. And with everything that goes on out there now, and you guys all hear this on TV, um, yes, the veterans, you, you can't say enough about them. But the same thing goes with our first responders, police and fire, both. And just so you guys know, we truly ourselves, especially here in the village of Addison, appreciate what you guys do for us. So thank you. So we're gonna do things a little different uh, this year than we've done in the past. So we're going to start off doing dinner uh, right now. Um, we're going to do, start doing soup and salad. Um, but as we do the soup and salad, please be a little respectful because the two organizations that are here that we're raising money for tonight um, are going to come up and do their speeches. So if you could be respectful as they come up and do their speeches and we'll go from there. So our first, uh, Speaker tonight will be Zoe. And she will explain everything with the Ritz about her, her organization that is new to us. We have to move the mic down for the short people. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. My name is Zoe Kreiner, and I am the founder and CEO of a group called Support Over Stigma. Let me give you a little background. From my grandfather to my son, 36 have served or are currently serving in the US military. Thank you. Most become, come home to become police, fire, EMS, as do a lot of veterans. And um, November 2nd of 2019, the unthinkable happened. I had to get a hold of my son while he was deployed 9,000 miles away from home and tell him he lost his best friend, a 22-year-old named Corporal Patrick O'Reilly, to PTSD. My son ended up losing three people in four days to suicide while he was 9,000 miles away from home. And what started as a mama bear, how do I help my own kid, has turned into an organization that has helped over 26,000 current military veterans and first responders in three and a half years. Thank you. 
So how do we hit those numbers? Well, when it first started, we were military moms. We did what we knew how to do. We started with care packages to deploy troops with mental health information. Hey, here's what to look for. If you or somebody you know is struggling, here's a couple places in the military, but here's 25 other places you can reach out to to get help. Then COVID hit, and I got a call saying, my 89-year-old dad hasn't eaten in four days because he won't go to the grocery store. I'm getting groceries delivered, but can you take a sandwich over or soup because they're saying it's gonna be four hours. So we started Foodie Fridays to our shut-in veterans. And then something else happened, and something else happened. We're up to 29 programs. We run um, caregiver support groups. We run um, some, uh, one of our fastest growing programs is called I Am the Veteran, and it's all female veterans. Um, I also have a son who's a police officer and a daughter who's a firefighter, so it's super personal for us. And I think you know, I could stand up here and I could spout the statistics. We've all heard that phrase, 22 a day, right? 22 veterans take their life every day. But I want everybody to take a deep breath and, and hear the next words that are coming out of my mouth. And I'm gonna look straight here at the Village of Addison people. 22 a day, which are not real numbers, they're actually almost double that, but at 22 a day, that's 8,030 people. To put that in perspective, in less than four years, that wipes out the entire village of Addison. Let that sink in for a second. One is one too many. So how do you help? You send a text, you make a phone call. We got our name support over stigma, right? If, if I come to you and I say, gosh, I put on a few pounds, and you live in my neighborhood, you might offer to walk with me, you might offer to, to join a gym with me. If I come to you and I say, gosh, you know, there's more month than there is money, I think it needs some budget help. You might say, hey, I can help, or I know somebody who can, but if people say they're gonna start counseling, it seems like the knee-jerk reaction is, well, what the heck is wrong with you? What was so bad that you gotta start counseling? Instead of saying, that's the strongest, most courageous decision you've ever made, how can I support you? And when it comes to our, um, our veterans who come home, right, you guys were the help. You, you helped everybody else, now let us help you. And when it comes to first responders, you get it coming and going, right? Um, how do you help the helpers? And we have programs in place for all of them. So we've got a table in the hall. I'll be around after dinner. Feel free to come up and talk to us. Um, I'm very proud to have Chaplain Brown here. Um, could you stand up for me just for a second, Chaplain Brown? Um, Chaplain Brown is from Great Lakes Naval Station and um, has been a big component of um, how, I'll, you can go ahead and sit down. <laughs> um, allowing us to help out at Great Lakes, where um, whether it's um, spending Christmas at Great Lakes and taking dinner up or care packages, or we're getting ready to do um, go up and do Mother's Day cards because it brightens their their outlook on what's going on, and it's the little things that make a difference. So, I really appreciate everybody being here tonight. Thank you so much, and enjoy your dinner. Our next speaker, Jay, he's new to uh, the Healthy Mind, Healthy Bodies program over in Ezra. And come on up, Jay. Hello, yes, I'm relatively new to Nezra. I think we're crossing about halfway, six months. Um, but I'd like to briefly talk about Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies in Nezra before I kind of go in about my role and what I do. Um, NEDSRA had noticed in 2009 that there was a surprising amount of veterans who was in the community of DuPage County. So they ended up putting money aside and starting an organization with Donna Allen, English is hard, Donna Allen Seabach, and started Healthy Minds, Healthy Bodies. The three main components, free gym memberships at any park district that you live in or you're willing to commute to in DuPage County, 15 hours of personal training, free, and then community monthly events. The whole reason why they went with the concept of healthy minds, healthy bodies is because veterans need to work on both. Not just when they transition out, not just when they've been out, the whole way through. But unfortunately, because I am a veteran, uh, actually Navy, 2015 to 2018, so who we on Navy? Um, I can tell you from firsthand experience, the military wants to use you, and they will do what they best they do what they can, they do their best to make sure that you are set for the world when you get out. 
Unfortunately, depending on where you live, that's not always the case. So I can personally attest, even though we have worked for Netstra for about six months, I've seen the benefits that come with a program like this and a small organization in a local community that's not burdened by federal law, government mandates, things like that, like the VA. And other organizations like Support Over Sigma really help fill a need and a, a, a lacking because there's only so much a government can do, but there's a lot that our community can do. So since I've taken over, I've only ran a handful of events, but I can tell you that these veterans have very quickly adopted me into the program uh, and, and trust me and support me. And as a veteran, I love the fact that it's not a projection, it's not something I'm showing, it's something that I'm receiving, and it further motivates me to keep doing the high degree that uh, Donna was doing before she had stepped away so she could focus on Allen Force. And so I could come in and rejuvenate things because even though I look 40, I'm actually only 31. So I have a youthful spirit and an energy that I can bring and try and uh, keep our new transitioning members out and get them ready. And the members who have been out for a long time and they just finally are a little receptive to some help or just something different, that's where I can step in and do what I can. So thank you very much for Knights Columbus for allowing us to be here. Thank you to the Village of Addison. And of course, thank you for support over Sigma. You guys do some phenomenal work. So this is our last speaker of the evening. Um, and I hope you guys had a nice dinner. Um, we we saved the best for last. So every year um, since we've started this, and it started with the, with the gentleman on the back of our program, Joe Beard. And that's actually how we started this. Um, I truly, truly love doing this. Um, and what really makes it um, affectionate for me, I don't know what other word it would be, is that what I really, really like is that we are able to raise money for veterans, but at the same time, too, um, we can honor one of our own from, from Council 650, <coughs> excuse me, here in Addison. Um, Joe Buren was the first one. Um, and now, this last year, we lost a, uh, a great man um, that was part of our council, George Othon Sr. Um, he was a financial secretary, past grand night. Um, and I don't know anybody that didn't like him, including his children. So, um, <clears throat> with that, um, I'm going to bring up his son, George Jr., and he's going to talk about his dad. Please remain seated. Okay, not getting up right now. Maybe it's because you just had dinner, but I'm okay. Mike, thank you very much. Mike has been incredible for so many years, and he was so close to my father, as many of you have been. Um, it's very touching to be here, and I'm honored to speak um, about my dad and on behalf of my family. So my name is George Othon Jr. Um, but when I'm in the room with one of my sons at this table, I'm George II, and he's George III. He's going to raise his hand. There he is. So it's a, truly an honor uh, to be here, and I am humbled. Uh, truly, if there was a word stronger than humbled. I would come up with it um, to be speaking in front of veterans. And my, my father, as Mike mentioned, uh, passed away, I still say, and it is very recently. Um, we're coming up on a year, March 13th. And um, my mom is still with us. She's a, a year older than him, and she's got everything she knows she's like on every subject everything she remembers spot on so we are also saying hello and we just did a little video at the table to mama cheeky many of you know her uh, knights of columbus especially uh, sierra and laura thank you just now so uh hi mom take that opportunity for a cameo and um 
my dad had just a very short, valuable list of loves. His first love was his religion. And that was inbred in us very early. The second was, of course, his beautiful bride, um, my mommy. And then the Knights of Columbus. Not far third, believe me. I was just on time. I was 16. He goes, two more years before you're a knight. I go, yeah. I didn't know what a knight was besides not day. I'm like, okay. And then there's an insurance agent at my door, the parents' door, <laughs> the day I turned 18. So I was like, okay, I'm in. Wasn't really sure of anything. But flash forward, 41 years later, uh, the best organization I could ever been a part of. So I want to tell you a, everybody, um, a short story, quick. I know my table is here with a couple eyebrows up when I say short story. A good friend of mine said to me, said about me, he said, George thinks the Old Testament's a short story. So it's a good thing everybody ate. Um, and no, this is short. But uh, a little show and tell, if you don't mind. Some of you, I was honored to walk to the table in the middle, because it wasn't for sale. I told Mike <laughs> to begin like, no, I don't want anything on the end. Um, so I don't know how easily this could be seen or if anyone's seen it. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about it. Is that behind my head? Wow. Technology. So many of you don't know this, but I grew up as a very challenged child. Um, I was born an infant. There's one problem. And this dovetails into some truth here, okay guys? My parents, Mexican Americans, so am I, all of us are. We didn't speak much English um, for a very long time. I'm the oldest. And this was hung in um, my dad's basement, where I grew up. <laughs> and um, for those of you that can't see it all, it says return from hell, Korea. So when you're six and seven, and you're not great with the English language, there's only five words you know, <laughs> four you can't say, and my dad's got hell up on the wall. So I remember this vividly. Why would my dad, God-fearing, Catholic, hope that, remember I'm very young, I didn't bring it up for years, because it, it, it kind of intimidated me. Um, then, flash forward, 12 or 13 years old, Vietnam is going on. And some of my family members and cousins are older than me, but they're worried about the draft. So it starts making me, three or four years younger, worried about the same thing. And that's when I asked my dad about what this meant. And then he explained it to me. And he said, war is hell. That's what that means. And from that day on, I felt something that I would, I guess, never forget. But the, the first major part of it, of many emotions, was incredible pride. That my father, okay, get a little emotional here, he used to say, you know, you hide your fear with jokes and then you cry. <laughs> so he picked me out right away. But I realized later on, he was in Korea not speaking much English, definitely not Korean, and this is before he met my mom. So it all started coming together for me. And then as the years went by, I started noticing what's happening in media. And uh, of course, uh, the draft ended before I was of age, um, of, a, 
a war at my age that I didn't understand. And then as I grew older, I found out how many adults didn't understand it. So I, my dad was very supportive of all of it. And I'll never have, you know, the honor to do what, what he did. So to be here in front of this group is um, the biggest honor I can have right now in this regard. Um, I'm lucky to be born the first. Didn't, I didn't choose that part. Um, named George, I didn't choose that part either. But I do know one thing right now. Um, George Senior Senior is looking down upon all of us and blessing this room and all these beautiful people. And what a very, very special night this is. And I'm so honored to have this opportunity to share a little bit about my dad. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, George. Um, Mr. Hardley, would you come up here for half a second? Please. So I want to share a story that, <clears throat> so when I joined the Knights, uh, Mr. Mr. George Oton was still the financial secretary. And I'm gonna, and the reason I'm asking Tom to come up here, because I always screw the stories up. And I think Mr. Provenzino, another brother Knight, knows the story as well. So, quite down to that. So, and what I want, the story, uh, well, so to, to tell you, so to, George and his wife were so very close. George was our financial secretary, but the story that I heard was the seer did the books. Yeah. yeah. So, and I was telling George earlier when I would go to the go to the grandparents' house and I'd knock on the door and George, your grandfather would answer, and I'd tell him I want I came here to see your your grandmother, Sierra, because I knew who was actually the financial secretary. <laughs> and I and I was telling George, there's um, if you ever met his his parents, they they were they were they loved each other, they were a team, and they were they were beautiful people, and I I loved both of them, and I was very lucky as uh, a young man joining the Knights and becoming Grand Knight almost immediately because everybody was older and nobody wanted to do it anymore, that um, they, uh, he, they, he really took me under his wing. And the neat story about it is, is the town that they grew up in Mexico was a small town. They didn't know each other. They, families didn't know each other. They didn't meet until they came here. So they grew up in a town that was smaller than really what Addison was, but they didn't know each other. And the families didn't know, but they met here. But they were, and they were perfect. They were the same height. They were, they were. It was great. They saw eye to eye with each other, which was perfect. You know, that's how they, they that's how the, I think their uh, the relationship was. They always saw eye to eye. So that, I mean, you, George, your parents, you know, you guys, you know, they were beautiful people. Yeah, and your grandmother's luckily enough is, and your mom is still with us today. So yeah, but she was the financial secretary for uh, Council Six Fifty. George was just the one who gave us the paperwork, right, Mike? Yeah. By name. Yeah, yeah, by name, right. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, Thomas. You're welcome. So, so I wanted to add that input, but most of the, most of the people that are in this room and nobody raising their hands, when I try to tell the story, it doesn't come out right. So that's why it's time to do it. So anyway, um, thank you very much. We're all done with speeches. Like I said, we actually have all the raffles. We're actually going to extend the raffles to 9.30. We're, we ran a little bit behind. So stick around to 9.30. Spend all your money. Um, I hope everybody had a great dinner. I truly love all of you for coming tonight. And I have one more surprise for everybody that nobody knows about except for just maybe a few. Because everybody's been asking, where is it at? The donut wall is out in the hallway. So there's donuts out there, so don't miss it. So again, thank you everybody.
truly enjoy you being here, spend a lot of money, have a lot of fun, and thank you very much.